Hello, precious ones. Welcome to Kiss Time with Jesus, brought to you by COPUSA. I am your host, Nina Echain. Hi, hi, children. Hi, hi, hi children. Hi, children. Amen. 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 Good news. Christ died, Christ died for me, me and, and you. you. Awesome, Papa. Pa. Yes, you woman. And precious ones, you are all welcome to today's program. You are welcome. Very beautiful day that the Lord has made that you and I have to be glad and rejoice in it. It has pleased the Lord that you and I, we all have to come together and learn from the Bible, have fun and, and, and just brainstorm and discuss things that we think sometimes what we don't have answers to, but we don't know who to ask. So precious ones at home, you are welcome. Welcome, 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 welcome. We love all of you. We have precious ones that have zoomed in and are here with me. I'm going to give them the opportunity to introduce themselves. And then when they are done, introduce themselves. We'll go straight. And you precious ones at home, you can also tell us your name or you can test us, right? And then from there, we'll go straight. And then we're going to learn our memory verse for today. So precious ones, the first person can go first. You want to go, Sean? We can't hear you, Sean. Okay, um, Esther, you can go. We can't hear from Sean. Hi, my name is Esther Morgan, and I'm from Patterson District. Hi, my name is Benedict, and I come from the Cincinnati District. Hello, my name is Janelle Piamaka from Greater Gray Styles District. Who goes next, please? Hello, my name is James Osei. I'm from PIWC New York District. Hi, my name is Declan Afori from Cleveland District. Hi, my name is Darren Afori from Cleveland District. Precious ones, you are all welcome. You are all welcome. And you at home too, you can mention your name to us. Invite a friend, share the link. Love, give us some love and some thumbs up if you love the program. We are here to listen to your feedbacks. Let us know what you think. Precious ones, you are all welcome to Kiss Time with Jesus, brought to you by COPUSA. We love you so much. So for the past two weeks, or for the whole month, we've been talking about love. But we also, this year, we came up with um, some few topics that we wanted to treat this, this year. And um, the first one we talked about a few weeks ago was walk in truth. Walk, sorry, excuse me, walk in wisdom. Walk in wisdom. And today we are talking about walking in truth. Walking in truth. Walk in truth. But before we hit... Um, our, 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 our topic for today, we want to learn our memory verse. We want to learn our memory verse. And today our memory verse will be taken from John chapter 14, verse six. John chapter 14, verse six. And I'm reading from the NIV version. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the light. No one comes to the Father except through me. Amen. So precious ones, we have learned what well, we are learning that John is telling us, John 14, 16, he says that Jesus answered, I am the way. He is the truth. And he is life. Three things here. No one can come to the Father except through him. Who is the him here? It's Jesus. Whom, who is the him here? It is Jesus. So precious was, we want you to practice your memory verse at home and then share it with um, um, mommy or daddy. God richly bless you. Precious was, we have tons of scriptures that we'll be reading um, today. And today we will be, our theme is what? Walking in truth. Walking in truth. Walking in truth. Precious ones, Walking in truth 
is um, a topic that we will be talking or be discussing today. So these are all scriptures we'll be reading. James chapter 1, verse 5, John 14, verse 16, John 8, 31, 32, Psalm 28, verse 7, Deuteronomy 31, verse 8. But before we even hit our main scriptures, there is something that... Um, before we even hit there, I want us to talk about or to look at. And um, we are talking about truth, walking in truth. We are talking about walking in truth. And I know somebody will ask, walking in truth. Now, before I even start my introduction, I want us to pretty much look at this. Before we even look at our introduction, let us go back here and look at something real quick here. So I'm trying to share, my, can you all see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. So we are going to go and look at some few, um, let me enlarge the screen. We are going to look at some few Bible games, um, a game that will introduce us into what we'll be talking about today. Bible game, true or false. It is a simple game that shows the importance of knowing what the Bible says, right? So the first one, I will read it. And if it is true, you tell me true. And if it is false, you can all call out false. So if it is true, all you all can call out. And then when it's false too, you can. So the first one is Martha was Jesus' mother. False. Martha was Jesus' mother. False. False. false, 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 false. God bless you, false. Why do we say false? We say false because you know the truth, right? You know the truth. And where do you know the truth from? From the Bible. Now, the next one. Moses built the ark. False. 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 Moses didn't build the ark. It was what? Noah, Noah. did not build the what? The act. And then Martha was not Jesus' mother. It was Mary, right? It was Mary. Now, David was a biblical king. True. 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 Jacob killed Goliath. False. 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 Jacob didn't kill Goliath. It was David, right? Jonah was swallowed by the whale. True or false? True. true. He was true. true. Yeah. Cain killed his brother. Abel, is it true or false? True. true. Paul was a missionary. True. 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 Jacob true. had no children. False. 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 It is false. Jesus died on the cross. True. 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 Jesus actually died on the cross. John betrayed Jesus. False. 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 Precious ones, we are learning what? Through fun. We are learning through fun. Remember, I know you ask yourself that these, you know, when I call the answer, when I call the questions, automatically some of you were able to know that this is false. No, Antonina, this is wrong. This is totally not right. But how were you able to tell? How were you able to tell that um, it wasn't John, right? That betrayed Jesus. How did you know that? Yes, Janelle. Because, um, because we got it from the Bible. Because you, you got to know that knowledge. You got that knowledge from the Bible, right? That it wasn't Jesus, um, John, who betrayed what? Jesus. Fantastic. God richly bless you. Precious ones, God wants us to live according to, 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 to his truth, right? And before we even go ahead with the scripture, let's just have a quick um, prayer. God, we thank you for this day. We want to live according to your truth. Help us to take heart. 
what you have to say about believing and acting on your word. This is what we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Precious ones, God tells us what is true through his word. God tells us what is true through his word. So knowing what the Bible says will help us recognize the truth from lies, right? And that is why we use that game, the Bible game, to kind of differentiate what is true and what is what false. Precious ones, our last lesson that we did to, uh, about a few weeks ago was about what? Wisdom. What does it mean to be wise? We learned a few weeks ago that doing what is good or making the right decisions pretty much what um, help us or makes us know that making good judgment for yourself, you're applying what? Wisdom, right? God bless you for that. Knowing the truth will help us make what? The right decisions or right, de um, right decisions for ourselves, right? So I want someone to read for us James 1 verse 5. James 1 verse 5. Someone should read for us. James chapter 1 verse 5. Yes. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Amen. Amen. Fantastic reading. Anyone that lacks wisdom should ask for wisdom, and it will be given to you with no what? No fault. With no fault. With no fault. Precious one, wisdom. Why am I making reference to James 1, a lesson we have treated two weeks ago? Because wisdom and truth work together to make us more matured as believers. Wisdom and truth work together to make us more matured as believers. The most important truth of the Bible is found in John chapter 14, verse six. John chapter 14, verse six. Can someone read for us John chapter 14, verse six? John chapter 14, verse six. And I'm reading from the NIV verse. Jesus answered, I'm the way, the truth. I'm the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, amen. Amen, precious ones. From what we just read, John 14, verse 6, precious ones, we have gotten to know that what? Any religion or idea or a person says won't that, uh, I don't know how to put this, but you know how sometimes people or we have some religion or some people that have this ideology that uh, we don't need Jesus to have a relationship with God right? That is wrong. We need Jesus. We can have an assurance in Jesus' sacrifice when we become what? Believers, right? How do we receive the Holy Spirit? How do we receive salvation? First of all, I want to pause here from what we just read from the John 14, verse 6, right? We know that some people believe that we don't need we don't really have to have a relationship with, with God or with Jesus. It's pretty much wrong to have a relationship with God, right? That's what some people believe. But we can have an assurance in Jesus' sacrifice when we become what? Believers. Now, my question to you all is that how do we receive the Holy Spirit or how do we receive salvation? Can somebody uh, tell us something? Yes, you can go. Yes, you can go. Uh, me? Yes, you can. Okay. So we can receive the Holy Spirit. We can receive salvation by accepting the word of Jesus Christ. Because if you accept with the word and believe it in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and he died for you, that you can get your salvation. 
through that. And God's word is the truth. So believing in the truth and letting the truth guide your life and letting the truth, which is also Jesus Christ, accepting that and believing in that can bring you salvation. Amen. Fantastic. God bless you. I love when you said that God's word is the truth. God's word is the truth, right? God's word is the truth. And that is why, um, and I think, um, Esther, you want to come in here. I know you wanted to share something with us before, because of what James just said, um, God's word is the truth. When you go to, I know Esther was sharing with me one time about something she read in, um, in the volume one, um, is he my father's God or my own God? The apologetics for children written by um, Apostle um, Michael Ajimana Mwaku, our national head. This book, I know some of you have. She was sharing something interesting. Esther, do you wanna share with us, please? Because um, James just made a very important um, um, point and I just want Esther to build on that. And what he said, um, was or what he just said is that God's word is the truth. Now, what are some of the symbolic things in the Bible that, um, Esther, you can go ahead. I don't yeah. want to take, I know you are sharing yeah. with us. Um, so I'm going to read, like read, read page 13 and 14, the symbols of the inspired book, the Bible. To help us better understand him through the Bible, God likens his word to so many things that we use every day. Each of the symbols is used to express a unique aspect of truth. The word is like fire to refine. It is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rocks in pieces. It burns, cleanses, purges all that is opposing to its holy standards. Two, the word is like hammer to convict. It is not my word like fire, declares the Lord. And like a hammer that breaks the rocks in pieces, it smashes and demolishes all evil. Number three, the word is a lamb to guide. Your word is a lamb to guide my feet and the light for my path. It's an instrument of light and illumination in the darkness. Number four, the word is a mirror to reflect. For if you listen to the word and don't obey, it is like glancing at your face in a mirror. Mm. It reveals our sinful status to us and provides hope for our restor restoration. Number five, the word is milk to nourish. Like newborn babies, you must crave pure spiritual milk so that you will grow into full experience of salvation. Cry out for this nourishment. It nourishes the young in the Lord. I'll be reading page 14 now. Planting the word of God. Number six, the word is a seed to multiply. Mm. Since you have been born again, not of, the, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and dividing word of God. It is germinating, life-producing word, having the potential of eternal life within it. Number seven, the word is like a sword meant to cut. Mm. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. It is sharp and two-edged in its operation, separating the things of the spirit and the flesh. And finally, number eight, the word is like rain and snow to refine. As the rain and the snow come down from the heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seeds for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It is bread to every soul that is hungry. Amen. 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 So precious was from what Esther just shared with us. There are a few things that pretty much reinforce what James said, that the word is the God's word is the truth. God's word is the truth. And God's word is the truth. What was the word? The word is the Bible, right? God's word can be found in the Bible. 
And we are now reading or we are getting to know from what Esther shared with us that the word is like a hammer to convey, right? When you hit a hammer on something, it breaks it down into pieces. So when you know the word of God, it breaks what whatever that looks like a mountain or something huge in front of you, when you use your word of God, it can break it into pieces. We got to know that the word of God is a lamp to guide us. It's a lamp to guide us. That is the truth. The word of God is a mirror to reflect, to reflect. The word of God is a milk to nourish us. That is why sometimes when you are sad and you go read the Bible, you get you get what? Encouraged by the word, right? So sometimes it nourishes us. Sometimes even as human as we are, if you don't use, you don't eat well-balanced diet, right? You become malnourished, right? You don't look healthy. Same as Christians, we need to be precious children that are healthy in the word of God, right? How do we become healthy? By reading, feeding, meditating on the word of God, right? Esther also shared with us that the word is a seed to multiply. When we hear the word, we shouldn't only keep the word to ourselves, but rather what? We should share the good news. Now the word is a sword word. Um, it, 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 the word is like a sword, what, to what? The sword meant to cut, like the two double-edged sword, right? And finally, the word is like a rain and a snow. God richly bless you. Fantastic point, um, James, you brought. Look at what we got from that. God richly bless you and God bless you, um, Miss Esther, for reading for us. Now, back on track to what Antonina was reading earlier. Um, we, what we were talking about um, earlier. So precious ones, we need, the question that was on the floor that made James contribute was how do we receive the Holy Spirit or how do we receive what? Salvation. Wholeheartedly, we can do that by what? Accepting him wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly believing that Jesus is the only way to God. And the only way to heaven is the first step in recognizing what? Our sinful lives. Precious was you opening up and accepting the Lord as your Lord and personal savior wholeheartedly. That is a way of receiving him into your heart or receiving salvation. Now, I want us to read. Um, you can put your points down and then when we're done, we can all go over and discuss, okay? John, when you, can somebody read for us John chapter 8, verse 31 to 32? John chapter 8, 31 to 32. John chapter 8, the verse 31 to 32 from the... NIV Study Bible, the fully revised edition. Mm. It is subtitled, Dispute Over Whose Children Jesus' Opponents Are. Verse 31. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. John chapter 8, the verse 31 to 32 from the NIV Bible. Fantastic yeah. reading. God bless you. Now, precious ones, what must we do if we want to know the truth? What do we have to do? What do we have to do to know the truth? What must you do if you want to know the truth? What do you have to do? That is the first question. The second question, what is the result of knowing the truth? What is the result of knowing the truth? Yes, the floor is open. Yes, um, Darren. And then Esther, you can take the next one. As I read earlier, it says that if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth. Mm. And so I believe that to hold on to your teaching, the teaching is the word of God, the Bible. So he's given us his teaching. He's given us the complete manual and everything. So this is, we need the Bible to know the truth. If we didn't have the Bible, yeah, then we, we wouldn't know the truth. Good thing we have the Bible. Then it says, then that you will know the truth. 
then the truth will, will doesn't you not only do you know the truth but it also says that and the truth will set you free now i'm reading like i'm reading the the what it says underneath it the study bible what the commentary yeah the verse that it says truth closely connected with jesus and it is not mere mental assent but genuine trust demonstrated by discipleship that leads to salvation free freedom from sin not ignorance that's what it says in the, the bible commentary fantastic god richly bless you Darren. You said knowing the truth not only knowing the truth i don't know whether you can relate to this but i can um i have seen children or oh, i will use my one of my children as an example, where you know how boys, you go hang out with friends and you share ideas or something that you know. It's not even boys, it's just with children. Or it's even with grown-ups. we go and we share ideas with friends and it's like you learn something and you want to share. But as you're sharing it, you are, you, are, you are hoping the way you are sharing with people, they will believe it, right? And you say them confidently because you know what you are saying. You read it from a, a reliable source, right? Or like listening to the news, right? You know that what I'm listening is the truth, right? So when you are sharing with a friend, you share it confidently, right? And then the person, let's say you are sharing the news with about four people. There is a high tendency that out of the four people you share this news with, three of them will carry the news to the next people. Do you know that? And then now, because those people heard it from you, they will go share the news and it keeps spreading and it keeps going, right? The same way. If you lack wisdom, if you don't have access to some information, a perfect example, when you go to class and a teacher is teaching, right? And you don't really understand, you don't get it. Are you able, are you confidently, will you be able to confidently contribute to what a teacher is saying if you don't have information about what he's talking about? No, right? You can only contribute when you have information, right? You can contribute or when you understand what the teacher is talking about. The same way, when you get to know the word of God, when you get to know the truth, the truth doesn't only what, when you get to know the truth, you don't, you don't become captive, but the truth will do what? It will set you free. Why are you free? Why do you have confidence? You have confidence because you know the truth and the truth has set you free. What are some of the truth? We've gotten to the known, we've gotten from what Esther shared with us that word. His truth is a lamp to our feet, a light to our path, right? That will be the head and not the tail. That even though when we, when we, we fall into the shadow, um, or when we fall in our deepest valleys, he, the Lord, will lift us up from there, right? Now, precious ones, okay, um, Benedict, you want to contribute? I've seen your hand up. You can come in and then I'll continue. I also want to say that one member that actually had some sort of relationship to what you were saying, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6 to 8, which says, These commandments that I give you today are to be on your heart, and press them on your children, and talk, to, talk about them when you sit at home, and when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up, showing that when, when you read the Bible, you shouldn't just, even though you've been set free, God wants you to set other people free. He's trying to bring everybody that he can get to heaven. Amen. Amen. Benedict is sharing with us that don't only read the Bible and get to know the truth and be set free only, but you need to what? Send out the good news, the truth, communicate the truth to other kids, other precious ones, other adults, for them to also be the best to be set free. Precious ones, when you don't know the truth, you are in bondage. That is when the enemy comes to you with his lies. And then what? You follow it. Right? And do you know the truth? Just like some of the examples we gave, that Moses was what? Jesus married. Uh, Martha was Jesus' mother. We know that is not the truth. 
and we could confidently say that you false. Why do we say false confidently? Because we know the truth and the truth has set us free. It is very, very important as precious ones to know the truth because it is the truth that will set us free, right? Our obedience to God, holding on to his teachings will what? Was the only way that will set us what? Free. We know the word of God. The word of God, it will set us free, right? And then we said about what is the result of knowing the truth. Esther, do you want to come in here? I think I think uh, we said it. It set us free, right? So knowing the truth, what? Set us free. It frees us because we won't be tricked by our sinful lies. That pushes us away from God. When the devil comes to us with his lies, we know the truth. Therefore, the enemy cannot push us away from the things or from the love of God because we know the truth. Obedience is the key. We must actively be doing what God's word says. And that is what? To walk in truth. Obedience is the key. And therefore, we must actively what? Be doing what God says, God's word says. What are some of the things? What are some of the God's word? Can, can some of you share with us God's, what God's word says? If you should go to bed and I show up at your house and I tell you, Esther, Declan, Darren, James, Benedict, Janelle, Sean, what are some of God's words? What does, what are some of the God's, what are, can you give us some few examples of God's words that you have taken personally and you are working with them? Can you share with us? Everybody should be able to tell me one. Yes, Benedict. I always hear this memory verse where it says, well, my will not on me. You got born you said, oh, Papa, which means you should watch away because bad, bad, when you hang out with bad groups of friends, they're going to mislead you. And that's why it always comes back with that wisdom. Amen. First Corinthians. God bless you. So you see God's words that he knows, it's, it's the memory verse, right? Some of the memory verses we know. Or, or a phrase or something is in the word that you love so much. Yes, we'll go to Darren, uh, Declan. Everybody will share with me. Uh, I, I took, um, according to Joshua 1, 8 and 9, which is meditate, we trust in the Lord with our hearts. So, meditate on the Lord always and let's meditate on it. And I said, I may be careful to do everything written in my thing, do be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, and do not, for the Lord your God will be with you forever. I go. Amen. 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 God bless you. Yes, Darren. Mm, then we come to Esther. Uh, one of my favorite verses is John 4, 24, which says, God is spirit and his worshipers must worship him in spirit and in truth. And what makes me, what it makes me understand is that you can't go and be saying, God, you're good. God, you're nice. Yeah, yeah. You have to actually worship him from the very bottom of your heart that God, you are the king of kings. You have to know you have to make sure that God knows that you are serious. Because if you go and you are talking just, from your heart, it's coming from your heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you go and you are saying, God, you are so good, but and everyone, everyone, even the pastor, even the child, is just that is who's sitting right next to you can tell mm -hmm. that you're not presenting it, you're doing it because of something else. Then I'm not sure God will really pay much attention to what you're saying. Because there are other people who actually they need him. So when you worship him, you should worship him in truth because then God will pay huge amount of attention to you. God richly bless you. Fantastic. Yes, Esther, then we come to James. So one of my favorite memory verses that I was about to read was um, Deuteronomy 31 verse 8. And it says, the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Mm. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. So what that teaches me is like not to be afraid and not to like lose faith in God, even when you're in like your hardest times. Like right now during the pandemic, the pand pandemic, some people are losing hope. 
Um, some people's loved ones have like passed away and some are just losing hope. So that's the worst that helps me. You know. Fantastic, fantastic. Esther, God richly bless you. Your, your, what you know has really come timely. And in this hard time where I know some of you know of what is happening in Ukraine right now, right? And there are precious children in Ukraine, right? So Esther's message, Esther, can you share your message to all the children in Ukraine right now? Relate the scripture or what you have said. Can you relate to it and assure the children in, in Ukraine for us? Yes, Esther. I just, um, I just wanted to like remind um, everybody who's in Ukraine of the memory verse is Deuteronomy 31 verses 8, and I'll repeat it again. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Mm. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Amen. The Lord says that we should not be afraid. We should not be discouraged for he, the Lord, is with us. Precious ones, children in Ukraine, the Lord is with you. Do not be afraid. God richly bless you. Fantastic one. And let's keep all the people in Ukraine in our prayers. God richly bless you. Yes, James. Uh, I actually have two. Can I say them? Oh, say all of them. Okay, so I have Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. that says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And today in Sunday school, we learned a memory verse that I like a lot. And it's Psalm 29, verse 11. And it says, the Lord gives strength to his people and blesses them with peace. The reason why I like this so much now is because when you pray to God, he can give you strength and he can give you peace. So when someone's ignore, like really, make, really annoying you or going through a hard time, then the Lord can just give you peace and it will be able to send you through those hard times. So it reminded me, like when you were talking about the children who were in Ukraine, that they could use this memory verse of Psalm 29, verse 11, that when they pray to God, God will give them strength and also bless them with peace. Amen. Amen. Even in this difficult time of, of, of where, where they find themselves right now, James is letting the precious children and all people in Ukraine that what? The Lord will grant them peace. Even in this chaotic time, the Lord is with them. God richly, richly bless all of you. Yes, fantastic contribution to James. Um, Esther, let me call on Janelle and James, and then I will come to you, okay? Yes, Janelle. Uh, one of my favorite verses is Psalm 145, verse 14. So um, it says, the Lord is trustworthy in all he promises and faithful in all he does. The Lord upholds all who fall and lifts all who are bowed down. And what I understand from that is that you can trust on God to be with you no matter the situation. God bless you, Janelle. God richly bless you. God bless you. I am so excited that all of you know something. You have taken a portion of God's word and you are walking with it. God richly bless you. Yes, let's go to Sean, then Esther. Sean, share with us what you know, God's word that you walk, you've been walking with. Yes, yeah, Sean. Hopefully you're... Sean, can you hear us? No, we can't. Okay. Let's go to um, Esther. So there was one of the questions that you mentioned, what is the result of knowing the truth? And mm -hmm. I wanted to add to that real quickly. So mm -hmm. the results um, the results give us like kind of a clearer view of what God wants us to do and see and help us know when the enemy will strike. Amen. Okay. Fantastic contribution, Esther. God richly bless you. I, 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 I get so excited when I see precious children like you and those at home picking a piece or a sentence or something from the Bible and walking with it, doing it or, or, or um, pretty much relating it to yourself. It helps a lot, right? Like I am the way, the truth and the life. 
right? Would do not be discouraged for I, the Lord, I am with you. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. These are things you can pick is the truth from the way, right? And then you can relate to it and walk with it. God richly bless you. Yes, Janelle, your hand was also up and then we'll go on with the lesson. Oh, I want to say another verse. Is that okay? Sure. Um, it's Psalms 144 verse 2. He is my loving God and my fortress, my stronghold and my deliverer, my shield and who I, whom I take refuge, who subdues people under me. And uh, what I got from that is that you can count on God to be there for you. Fantastic. You can count on God to be there for you. Precious ones. Pretty much we have said what I was going to talk about in the next point, which is we discussing uh, the biblical truth, right? About reading Psalm 28, verse 7. Someone can read Psalm 28, verse 7. And then also looking at what? the Deuteronomy 32, 8. We can also look at that again. So someone should read for us Psalm 28, verse 7, and the other one should read uh, Deuteronomy 32, um, verse 8 for us. Okay, Auntie Nina, uh, can I read Psalm 28, verse 7? She, yes, you can. Okay, Psalm 28, verse 7 from the Amplified Bible, and I read, The Lord is my strength and my impenetrable shield. My heart trusts with unwavering confidence in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song, I shall thank him and praise him. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. This is one of my favorite, my favorite scriptures. James, can you read it again? Okay. Psalm chapter 28, verse 7, from the Amplified Bible, and I read, The Lord is my strength and my impenetrable shield. Hmm. My heart trusts with unwavering confidence in him, and I am helped. Unwavering, unwavering confidence. So when you know the word, precious ones, when you know the word, no amount of words that no one will tell you outside the Bible will you believe. Do you, do you, do you, do you agree with me? If you know the word and you know the truth and the truth has set you free. If somebody, if the enemy should come tell you something different, will you believe in that? No, you will not. God richly bless you, James. Fantastical. God bless you. Yes. Uh, can someone also read for us the Deuteronomy 32 verse eight? Deuteronomy 32 verses eight. When the Most High gave the nations their inheritance, when he divided all mankind, he set up boundaries for the peoples, according to the number of the sons of Israel. And I'm, I was reading from the NIV version. Amen. God richly bless you, Esther. Now, precious ones, my question is, what does God's promise, what does God promise us in these verses? We read Psalm 28, 7. And we read Deuteronomy 20, um, 32, verse 8. What does God promise us in these verses? What was the promise there? Um, yes, uh, um, Esther, you just read. So let me ask Janelle. Uh, what I got from that is that you can, he can help you. By being your strength and your shield, which it says in verse seven. Mm hmm. Okay. <laughs> Who else? Yes. As, um, Esther, you can go next. So, overall, what I learned from what um, um, God promises us from all these verses is mm -hmm. that to, he, promises, he promises to guide us into the truth and only the truth. And he also promises to not leave us or forsake us like in the verse Deuteronomy 31 verses 8. Amen. Fantastic. Yes, Benedict, do you want to ask something? Hey, Purva. One thing that members really pull out is that God will protect you when time to trouble come. Amen. Amen. Yes, Darren, your hand was up. Do you also want to contribute? Yeah. 
So what I wanted to say is that first, God free, God gives us the truth, then the truth sets us free. Then mm -hmm. God makes sure that God makes sure that we are protected and that we never go to the evil side again. He will protect us every 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 time. That's what I've read from Deuteronomy. And there are tons of other verses that I've found that go, that God keeps on saying that He will protect us. That is why uh, I believe, don't remember the, the the week per se, but I believe we did a topic and you said that God said that 365 times in the Bible that we should not fear. And now I understand why, because if you say that 365 times, that alone gives us the point. But then there are other verses that says that he will protect us, he will protect us, he will protect us. So now I understand that when we, after we are set free by the truth, we shouldn't go back to not knowing the truth because God will always protect us. Fantastic. God richly bless you. When you know the truth, when you know the truth, the truth will set you free. Precious ones, from what you all said them right, that from the scriptures, the three things that stands out is that he will help us. Hmm. He will never leave us and he will protect us. Precious ones, do you know the words, the words that we just used? Do you actually understand them? Three things. The Bible is termed the truth. The source of our truth is from the Bible, right? And then we just use those scriptures. And the scriptures from there is saying that what? He will, he's saying that he will what? He didn't say, I will not leave. Uh, I will not leave you. He said, "I will never, never leave us." That is one. Two, he will do what? He will help us. He is our helper. When we we when we get to a point in our lives that we feel like, "Oh, I'm tired of this. I don't know what to do." God is telling us from his word, the truth, that word. He is promising us that he will help us. He is our helper. And the last one, he said what? He will protect us. Mm. Precious ones, I want you to go home from here or just in a few seconds, ponder about these three words. He will protect you. He will help you. And he will never leave you. What else do we want? These words are deep. I don't know about you, but I take this personal and I take it deep. My Lord is telling me that he will never leave me nor forsake me. He will protect me when the enemy attacked me. And he will never leave me. And he will help me. All I need to know, all I, all I need to do is to ask. When I ask, he will come in. My help, my help, all my help, all of my help cometh from the Lord. Our help cometh from the Lord, the creator of the universe. Yes, James. I just wanted to say that we can find all these words in the Trinity because the Holy Spirit is our helper. And when Jesus left, he didn't leave us. He left his Holy Spirit with us. Mm, our, comforter. Says, our comforter. Yeah. And it says the name of the Lord is a strong tower, meaning that God himself is our protector. So we can find all these words through God himself interacting with us as Christians. Amen. 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 Fantastic, James. Fantastic. I'm enjoying my own lesson. Precious ones, today's words are deep. I don't know about you, but we should have some confidence. We need to carry, walk with our shoulders up. The, the Lord says he will protect me. Now you understand why you can, you walk. when you know the truth, the truth sets you free. You are not under any chains, any bondage. Why? Because you know when you are sick, God will heal you. When you are in, in, when you get in any trouble, he is there to protect and help you. He will never leave us. We are never alone. He is always with us. Mm. 
he's always with us. Precious ones, God richly bless us. Now, I'm narrowing the lesson down. Precious ones, doubting God's presence is one way that Satan likes to try to discourage us, right? But you know what? I just want to stop right there for us to kind of talk about that a little. Doubting God's presence is one way Satan used to kind of discourage us believers, right? Now, precious ones, I know we've talked about that already. If you know the truth, will you even doubt God's presence in the first place? No, because you know the truth and the truth has set you free, right? So if the devil come to tell you that, oh, you are a loser, you will never get an A. Do you believe that? No, because the source of our wisdom is from where? Is from the Lord. Our source of wisdom is from the Lord. So if our source of wisdom is from the Lord, why will I allow the enemy to tell me that, oh, Antonina, you don't know nothing. You're not going to pass this. You're very poor in math. Mm -mm. I refuse to believe it because that's not the truth. It's false. The truth is that James 1, 5 says that what? If anyone lacks wisdom, go to God and ask for wisdom and he will give it to you with no what? Hesitation. We know what? We know fault. fault. So God will give it to you freely without judging you. That is the truth. Therefore, as precious ones, don't ever say, oh, I'm not good at this. Try it. The more you try, you will get better at it. You will get good with it. Precious ones, there is nothing under this sun that is not in the Bible. All we need to know is to know the truth. Let us spend time to get to know the truth. It is only the truth that will set us free. And the truth is the word of God dwelling on the past mistakes or our failures instead of accepting God's forgiveness and guidance will what? Will keep us away from walking in truth. Do you believe that? Do you believe that if we dwell on our past mistakes and failures, instead of accepting God's forgiveness and guidance, if we dwell on our past mistakes and failures, do you think that that will prevent us or it will keep us away from what? From walking in truth? Do you? You do. Yes, Benedict. I would actually like to say one thing that actually relates, really relates to this. When you, do, when you dwell on your past mistakes and failure, failures, it gives you a bad mindset. Mm -hmm. and what, who brings bad mindset? It's a devil. So just dwelling on your past mistakes and failures, you're already giving devil, the devil way more access to your life than you think. So I always know, and my mom always tells me, even after I fail a test or get a B or something, mm -hmm. I always have to look ahead and keep going. Because I think Albert Einstein said this, you learn from your past to help you in the future. So always make sure the mistakes stay mistakes and that you fix them. Because who said like, okay, I said something mean to my friend. Okay, we're not friends anymore. Like, no. You can always say, okay, I'm sorry. Can you please forgive me? I said, yes. I said, okay, let's keep going with our friendship. And then it goes like that. Like, always make sure you are forgiving and have that forgiving heart and ready to keep moving on. Amen. Amen. God bless you. So precious words. It is always good not to dwell on our past. The fact that you made bad grades the last time doesn't mean that this school year you still make bad grades. No. Wherever we've got it, we need to pick the pieces and learn from it. It is okay to make a mistake because we are not perfect. It is okay if we don't do good in, in, in school 
because we are there. We are going to go to the source of wisdom and ask God for it. And we are going to what? Strive and what? And make better grades. There's nothing that is too hard for God. If there's nothing too God hard for God and we are created in God's image, what makes you think that it, is, it should be hard for you? Knowing the truth and the truth setting you free. Precious ones, I'm in love it. I'm loving, loving, loving my own lesson. God reach and bless you. And I know you are also learning something. Precious ones, when we know God's word and boldly live according to a truth, Satan lies don't stand a chance. Do you agree that when we know God's word and boldly live according to its truth, Satan lies do not stand a chance. This is our last topic question and then we, are, we, we bring the lesson to end. Do you think so? Yes, Darren. Yes, I think so, because you know the truth. When Jesus was being tempted, he said a lot of things. So whenever you are being tempted with lies and, sit, and Satan is trying to tell you, okay, no, 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 it is, it is all right to do this. It is all right to do this. You should know on your own that, no, it literally says in the Bible, do not do this. So I don't believe that when you know the truth and you confidently and boldly do it or take it out, you, you, you like Satan's lies will work. I don't believe that. I believe the opposite. God bless you. Yes, Benedict, do you want to add? We, we bring in the lesson to an end. Yeah. So Benedict and then, oh, Declan. So, okay, Declan, you can go and then Benedict, you go. So I just wanted to say that uh, when also the same time, when also Jesus was tempted, he said a lot of things and and Satan was afraid. But but uh, one day in the preaching, my dad said that uh, when you are going to bed, you don't put the Bible next to your bed because you know that Jesus, Jesus is the Bible. So Jesus <laughs> is the Bible. You have to know the word. You have to know the word that is inside the Bible to stand against Satan's lies. So mm -hmm. let's, you already know, let's say that somebody has a, a math test and then you give and then you saw someone give this all his answers or go and steal the math test from his from the teacher's desk. You know it. And then the person lies. You know it. So when you tell the teacher, the teacher will also see. That's the, you are correct because she trusts you. God bless you. Yes, um, Benedict, then James. I have to say, once you know the truth and you have that wisdom that God gives you, faith and lies are going to be nothing. Because, for example, let me take the mark of the, I'm sorry if I bring this up in this a little deep, I'm sorry, the mark of the beast. If someone says, hmm, you're actually going to have 666 on your forehead. We know that that's not true because in the Bible, you know that revelations is highly symbolic and the head stands for your thoughts and consciousness to willingly serve the devil and your hand is what you do to actually be serve the devil. Amen. Amen. It meant great contribution. Yes, James. I was going to say that once you know the truth, the devil's lies can affect you because I was looking at it in terms of when Jesus was being in the wilderness and the devil was trying to tempt him by saying stuff that was in the Bible. But Jesus was also replying with the stuff that was in the Bible against him. So when he was saying stuff like he should bow down, then he was able to use the truth. Because what Satan was telling him was the Bible. It was part of the Bible. But he twisted it in his own way to kind of benefit him. So Jesus knew the truth, like the right version, and that's what he used against Satan. But let's just say, I know this isn't going to happen, but let's just say that uh, Jesus, uh, he, he, he didn't know the word. Even though that can't happen, Satan was using the Bible. So if Jesus didn't know the word, then he wouldn't have been able to effectively uh, deal with Satan, which means that if we know the word as Christians, we don't have to hide. We can easily deal with Satan on our own because we know the word. Amen. 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 Yes, Darren, and then we we'll bring our lesson to an end. Okay, so I was going to say that there are two types of truths. The one that we make up, which I believe is called deception, because mm -hmm. Satan misinterpreted what the, what the Bible said. And as such, if you, if you weren't Jesus, I'm pretty sure all of us would have fallen for it. 
Because mm -hmm. the angels, when Satan was telling Jesus to fall up so that the angels would come and come save him, I believe the angels really would have come. Because this is Jesus. If he wanted, the angels really would have come. But he said it because he was strange. Because Satan has had made, misinterpreted what the Bible has said. And those types of truths are very, very dangerous. Deceptions. Where you think the truth is this. You end up not only harming yourself, but others. Because you will start giving out false doctrines. Which basically means giving out false truths. You start saying, this is what you need to be saved. Because the Bible says that if you accept Jesus Christ, as your Lord and personal Savior, if you say it, right? But if you say it, but you don't really mean it or believe it, then you aren't really saved. Because when you read the Bible again, it says, if you believe and you believe in your heart, it says, then you'll be saved. There are certain, those are the types of truths that are actually truth. So when you are reading the Bible and you misinterpret what it says, you end up doing the wrong thing. Like um, super book, there is an episode which I believe is called the Sermon, yes, the Sermon and the Mount. Well, I watched this public episode called The Sermon on the Mount. Chris, Joy, and Gizmo, they got the truth very wrong. And as such, Chris got slapped slapped two times. I'm not sure he enjoyed it very much. Anyway, so when you misinterpret the truth, it almost always ends badly, unless you change quickly. God bless you. So precious ones, we have learned a lot today. We are still on our series of walk the walk. A few weeks ago, we talked about walk in wisdom. Today, we, we are, we've also treated walk in truth. And it is very clear, very, very clear. We need to study the word. God's word is the truth. God's word is the truth. So we need to study the word and allow the Holy Spirit to lead us. It is very clear. If you know the truth, it is the truth that will set you free. And uh, we got the opportunity, precious ones here, shared with us some words in the God's word that they have, they have taken, they love so much that they have taken and they are walking with them. And we also got to know that the word of God, it comes to encourage us. It is sharper than the two double-edged sword. It is what well, it's like, it's, it's, it's pretty much they use them to, to the word of God, the, sim, the symbols. And then Miss Esther also shared with us something she read from the apologetic books that was written by um, our apostle Michael Ajimana Mwako. And she shared with us, precious ones, read the word and read Christian resource. In Church of Pentecost, you can read the word of God and this book too is very important. If you need us, let us know the apologetics for kids. Precious ones, we, have, we are bringing our lesson to an end. I have learned so much. But before we go, this afternoon, we have gotten to know about work in truth. And we know it is the truth that will set us free. And the only source of our wisdom is Christ Jesus, our Lord, right? And then walking in truth, the truth is the word of God. If you know the truth, the enemy cannot come to you with any lies. Even when he tries, because you know the truth, you will use the truth to let him know that this is not coming from the Lord. Because of what we have learned, and now we knowing the truth, and Esther sharing us that, and James also sharing, a lot of you share with us, that God is telling us that we should not be afraid. For he, the Lord, will protect us. He will never leave us, and he will help us. I want one of you. Let us spend a minute and pray for all the children and all people in Ukraine. Precious ones, Jesus loved little children. God will hear our prayers. I want one of you to pray for all our precious children and parents and families in Ukraine. One of you. Let's pray quickly and then we can leave. Who would do that for us? Yes, Benedict. I think Benedict's hand was up first. Okay, let's pray. Okay. Father God, I pray that you send protection to Ukraine. I pray that all the people in Ukraine, I pray that you send the angels and Holy Ghost fire to protect them as the Russians are trying to. Please help them so they'll be able to stay safe and win this war and send the Russians back where they came from. God, please help us and give them the knowledge to develop new sources and ways to deceive. 
this is self care and that there will be you can want this natural healing. Amen. Amen. Precious ones, God bless you. We'll see you next week. Invite a friend, share the link with a friend, and invite someone to the next program. God bless you. Stay safe. And let's keep all our precious ones in Ukraine, and let's keep them in our prayers. We love you all. God bless all of you. Bye.